We were discussing our initiatives uh, over at BARC, our progress up to date, and uh, specifically related to the overpopulation of, of animals. And uh, then we have a presentation by uh, some phenomenal students from Rice University, and they've done an amazing job in uh, pointing out uh, where we can uh, do better in terms of our intake and outtake. I'm with the Kennel Club from Rice University. We are computational and applied mathematics seniors. We were approached by the uh, BARC, which is the Bureau of Animal Regulation and Care, and we were tasked with investigating the feasibility of implementing a no-kill policy for the city of Houston. So with BARC's current resources, no-kill seems infeasible. <coughs> of course, there are ways we can increase the live release rate. Uh, first, and most importantly, we should focus on reducing the intake. Um, there have been efforts like spay and neuter programs that may be able to help here. Essentially what we did was we, we built a, a model inspired by a number of different fields within mathematics, um, which it was essentially probabilistic in nature. And we, uh, we parameterized this, this model using the data that we got and put it into this simulator, which can be accessed online. Uh, and essentially what you can do is you can fiddle around, you can say, okay, well, what if we had more intake? What if, uh, you know, more people were adopting dogs? What if uh, we, we had more cages in the shelter and we could hold more? Uh, and from that, you can sort of estimate and see, okay, well, given this situation, this is, what, this is what our live release rate might look like. This is how many fewer dogs we can euthanize. Um, and so it's a tool that people can use to essentially figure out uh, what direction you need to take the shelter for, uh, to, to get the desired uh, results as far as your live release rate is concerned. When we were asked to work on BARC after it had been moved out of the health department, we had a lot of leadership that came from the private sector and a lot of the public sector leadership was about evidence. And so we looked around to see what the academic literature said about what are the most effective kind of levers that you can change to impact live release rate and how can we estimate the, the number of stray animals out there and there's just not much there, really. So what these guys are doing is really kind of leading edge stuff, not just in Texas or in, in Houston, but probably in the nation. And um, I think it's going to be really, really valuable for us as a policy tool. It's going to be valuable to the council members because they can see if we decide to allocate X dollars, the areas in which those X dollars are going to be most impactful. If you only were from the emotional side, I mean, you know, you're not going to run into people who are going to argue with you that you don't want to put down animals. I mean, you know, we care about our animals. But the fact of the matter is, how do we do it? Is it worth a financial investment? I mean, besides the emotion. So when somebody says, shows you the chart, the graphs, the numbers, the X, the Y, and says, these are the facts, then you can say, yeah, that makes good sense. And then you add to that some of the other presentations, which said, how much does it cost to do the kinds of things you want to do? You've really, and then you, finally, the emotions, and you've got a, a three-pronged front on why we need to move forward. Upon like first glance, applied math and animal shelters don't seem to really go together, but uh, it, they really complement each other really well. Applied math can sort of be applied to anything, and um, we were able through this project to give some really quantitative results to something that didn't have so much of that before, and it's allowed for people to uh, really make some good improvements and, and see what exactly it will take to reach the goals that they want to have.